From Belgrade we planned to go to Slovenia by car. So while we were packing our bags, Roma went out to the airport to rent a car and drove it to the parking lot of the nearest shopping center. We took all our stuff, checked out, said goodbye to Belgrade and its main beautiful street Knieza Mikhaila and went to the car. It was difficult to fit all our suitcases, but we managed to do it. We had a long trip of almost 500 kilometers ahead of us. It was going to take 6 hours, including a couple of short stops. On our way out of Belgrade, we stopped by a children's store to buy a baby crib for Alisa, very similar to the one we had in our apartment there. We also bought a high chair, a stroller, some diapers and a couple of toys. No way around buying those, right? So we left Belgrade and set off on our 6 hour journey. After about an hour we crossed the border between Serbia and Croatia. The car thermometer showed unbelievable 40 degrees Celsius and we were happy to be driving northbound. As we drove the landscape changed and I liked observing that. I entertained Alisa a lot, at the time she was 15 months old and I was worried about how she would take such a long drive. She did well, she slept, we played a lot, she liked to source through the cosmetic bag, to take stuff out and then to put everything back again. We also had snacks, by the way Philadelphia cheese with plasma cookies is very tasty, it tastes like cheesecake. We made short stops at gas stations to walk and stretch a little. Here is Alisa in a gas station store somewhere in Croatia. She was very much interested in everything, she even insisted that we buy jars of jam. When after 5 hours we crossed the border of Croatia and Slovenia, we were amazed by the nature. Slovenia had a lot of greenery, huge fields with haystacks, incredible mountains with sun rays breaking through the clouds and beautiful bridges. When you drive there, you almost can't believe your eyes. Is that all for real? By the way, Alisa reacted to tunnels in a funny way. At about 6 pm, we reached Ljubljana, the capital of Slovenia, and our potential new home. It was 33 degrees in Ljubljana, still too hot, but well, better than 40. It took us a long time to get things out of the car. We had to make several back and forth trips to get all our things into the apartment. While we were carrying suitcases, Alisa was busy playing with her new stroller and a toy car which Roma had bought in Belgrade. We then put Alisa in her new stroller and went to the apartment. We took the elevator and Roma opened the door. Now a little overview of our temporary home. I immediately liked this apartment. Everything was clean, cozy, the owners even provided small shampoos and shower gels just like in a real hotel. And there was a nice kitchen with a big window. I really like big windows. Alisa liked the mirror, near which she showed off for a very long time. By the way, we have a tradition with Alisa. When we stay at a new place, I always ask her to check if the blanket is soft and she lays down on it. In the evening, Roma left for Ljubljana airport to return the car. He sent me a video of how beautiful the airport looked. You get out and you immediately see the mountains. So while he was away, the three of us, Alisa, Diana and I were assembling the new high chair and the crib for Alisa. She was actively helping and was delighted with her new crib in the end. And that night we slept very soundly. In the morning we went to the grocery store to buy food for breakfast. If you are interested, here is a receipt with prices. We paid attention to this because we were planning to move here to live. After breakfast we went to explore the capital of Slovenia, Ljubljana. We saw a local market where they sold strange clothing and also a lot of fruits and vegetables. We immediately bought a convenient cup of fruits. Alisa ate raspberries with pleasure. Then we went to the main square of Ljubljana, Presherin Square. Franz Presherin was a famous Slovenian poet. We walked around a lot that day and got to know cozy Ljubljana for the first time. We scheduled viewings of several apartments the next day to get ourselves acquainted with the local real estate market. Therefore, the first half of the day we went for the viewings and talked with the agents and owners. Alisa was with us, she slept, played and walked in the Ljubljana park. It was also very hard at that time. So we were very tired that day and in the evening we were just at home playing with Alisa.
We took a ride on the Ljubljana Funicula, which is a fun way to get from the city center to Ljubljana Castle. The ride in the glass cabin took about 3 minutes. We really liked the castle. Back in Moscow we watched a lot of videos about Slovenia, so Roma and I have long dreamed of seeing this castle and touching its walls. Soon my phone died, so I didn't film our evening walk around the castle, but I would recommend climbing to the top of the hill to see the beauty of Ljubljana and surrounding mountains. We again ran to look at various real estate properties and also went to the bank where, as we had expected, they refused to open bank accounts for us because of our Russian citizenship. In the evening we went for a walk and enjoyed a beautiful sunset. And these are the beautiful willows that grow along the Ljubljana Sariwa. When we returned home it started to rain heavily. Just look. <laughs> We visited a cafe overlooking the Ljubljanica river, there were boats on the river and also stand-up paddlers. It was that day that I acquired a new dream to paddle on a sub down the Ljubljanica river. Then we took a ride on the urban electric train, I don't recommend it, the cost of the ride was around 10 euros per person and it wasn't interesting. That day I also tried Gibanica for the first time. It is a Slovenian dish made of poppy seeds, cottage cheese, ground walnuts and grated apples. It was delicious. In the evening we also walked a lot and listened to street musicians and Alisa was even dancing. <laughs> that day the weather was too hot so we decided to take a break from our city exploration and just stay at home. We were playing tag with Alisa and in this video she put her leg up on the table in a very funny manner. We initially planned to stay in Slovenia for one week, but decided to prolong our stay, so we needed a new apartment. Since it was high tourist season, we were lucky to find one in a nearby building. So here is a review of our second temporary home. We had breakfast in our new apartment, I really liked the view from the window, just look, it's amazing. Then we drove to explore the northwest of Slovenia. Our first stop was the city of Kranj, the fourth largest city in the country after Ljubljana, Maribor and Celje. So we walked there a little and moved on. Our next stop was the city of Radovlice. It's a very beautiful and cozy medieval city, we liked it very much. There was an observation deck with stunning views of the mountains. Then we went to the famous Lake Bled. We arrived there in the evening and were completely delighted. It's a big lake with fantastic watercolor and a magical island place in the middle of it. We walked a lot around the lake in the rays of the setting sun. I want to remember how Alisa loved there. <laughs> <laughs> all in all, it was an eventful day, we returned home almost at night, Alisa fell asleep in the car, and here we are happy going up home in the elevator. We went to explore the northeast of Slovenia. The plan for the day was to visit 10 towns. Our first stop was the small city of Damžali right outside of Ljubljana. Then we went a little bit further north to Kamnik. We paid attention to infrastructure facilities, hospitals, kindergartens and grocery stores. In the town of Mozeria we stopped near a school. Alisa immediately ran to pick the flowers and give them to me. We also decided to have a snack there. We sat right on the ground and ate cottage cheese enjoying the silence. We then visited the town of Celje and left for the second largest city in Slovenia, Maribor. The first thing I liked about Maribor was the huge Drava river and its shores. One of the things Maribor is famous for is the fact that in medieval ages witches were burned right in the main square. In Maribor we also found a large park where we walked for a long time. Alisa again picked flowers and gave them to me. We then drove by the towns of Murska Sobota and Lyutomir. Alisa fell asleep again in the car. We quickly looked at these towns, they turned out to be beautiful and cozy. 
In the setting rays of the sun, we drove into the city Ptuj, which is the oldest town in Slovenia. We walked in the city streets and went out to the embankment, where we saw a stunningly beautiful sunset. Then we bought ice cream and decided to drive up to Ptuj Castle. I liked how people stood there enjoying the sunset. Then we said goodbye to the city of Ptuj and went to our apartment. On our way home, we also stopped at a gas station. It was a very busy day, we visited almost 10 towns and felt tired, but at the same time, we were very happy after such interesting adventures. We as usual had breakfast in the morning and went down to our car. That day we were planning to explore the southwest of Slovenia. On our way to the seaside towns, we stopped in the city of Rybnica. It's a very peaceful and beautiful place. It's like something out of a fairy tale. There was a beautiful stone bridge and willows hanging over the lake and a castle. Alisa liked playing near the castle so much that she didn't want to leave and Roma had to take her. We also saw a stage for events there, I thought that it would be great to watch a puppet theater about knights and princesses there in such a medieval atmosphere. Then we went to the Hofer supermarket to get something to eat. We drove on, sometimes making stops to take a break from the road and wash the windows from insects. All in all, we passed many beautiful places. I loved the view from the window and how the landscapes changed. Alisa enjoyed studying and playing with the map of Slovenia. Here Roma is showing Alisa how to honk and she really likes it. <gasps> <laughs> In the town of Cerknica we stopped near a kindergarten and Alisa drank kefir there. Finally we reached the seaside towns of Slovenia. Slovenia has access to the sea and a small coastline of 47 kilometers. Firstly we stopped in the town of Ankaran. Alisa saw the sea for the first time there. She was 15 months old at that time. Our next stop was the city of Portaroz. When you enter the city, you are greeted by beautiful trees that look like broccoli. We were very hungry by this moment, so we first had lunch overlooking the sea. And then we walked along the embankment and Alisa played with the sand. At first she didn't like the sand and raised her feet, but then she really enjoyed playing with it. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, the sand gave Alisa great pleasure. And by the way, not only sand. Also, for example, Alisa took out expanded clay from a pot with a plant and gave it to me. I will never get bored with her. All in all, I really like Porta Roche and I will always remember this city for this incredibly beautiful alley of trees that look like broccoli. Just look, it's amazing. We decided to take a break from our trips and just relaxed at home. We had tasty breakfast, enjoyed our beautiful view from the window, then we were playing with Alisa a lot. At that period we were actively learning different things, I showed her objects from the book and she was looking for them in our apartment. If she spilled kefir by accident, she always took a rack and cleaned everything herself. She was 15 months old. We rented an electric car in Ljubljana and then Roma and I drove together to Celje. It's the third largest city in Slovenia after Ljubljana and Maribor. On our way we also stopped at McDonald's. When we arrived in Celje we immediately put our electric car in charge and went for a walk in the city center. We really liked it, it was cozy there. There was such a beautiful Slovenia river and the atmosphere was relaxing. Then we sat in a cafe, drank coffee, watched children play peacefully. We also walked along the embankment enjoyed nature and each other's company. We also discussed whether we could live in this city. Actually, both of us liked it. Then we went home to our sweet daughter Alisa, who was playing with Diana. And also only three hours had passed since we left home. We missed you so much. That day we were planning to go to one of the most beautiful places in Slovenia. But firstly we dropped into the kids store to buy a car seat for Alisa. It was cheaper to rent cars through car sharing system, but they usually don't have seats, so we decided to buy one. By the way, this is how our car door opened in an unusual way. Then we put Alisa into the car, she really liked her new throne, and we went to the northwest of Slovenia, to one of the most beautiful places, Krajinska Gora. We put our electric car in charge and went for a walk in the village. 
The views there were simply amazing. At first we saw this stunningly beautiful waterfall, and then there was an amazing lake and snow white peaks towering above it. I just fell in love with this incredible and peaceful place. We walked there a lot and admired the mountains. We arrived home late as usual and Alisa fell asleep again in the car. We woke up and had tasty breakfast. Alisa ate her favorite porridge from the pot, perhaps because someone forgot to turn on the dishwasher in the evening. Then we jumped into the car and went on a little trip. We arrived again in the city of Radovlice. There was a strong wind that day and my head almost flew away. These are the cute little sheep that greeted us. We walked around the outskirts of Radovlice and had dinner at the restaurant. The view from the terrace was just unbelievably breathtaking. Then we stopped in the town of Shkofya Loka. Alisa was playing in the sandbox there. We noticed that there were already toys in the sandbox left by other children, so it was very cute. And then we went home. We as usual had breakfast, that time Alisa asked Roma to feed her, it was very cute. Then we went to the city of Nova Mesta. It was Saturday and there were no people in the streets. There was a quiet and peaceful silence. I liked that the main square was paved with stones. Then we came to the stunningly beautiful bridge over the river and took photos there. Near the river we found a playground and checked it out. We decided to move again and rented a room in the hotel. So in the morning we said goodbye to our second apartment with beautiful view out of the window and went to the hotel. Next I will show you what it looked like. went for a walk in the park. There were cozy tables and we ordered lemonade and pluskavitsa. Alisa ran happily there and watched the dogs. This is Roma and Alisa dancing in the hotel room. Someday in the future they will dance like this at Alisa's wedding. That day we again took the funicular up to Ljubljana castle and there we watched stunningly beautiful sunset. There were also a lot of people who sat right on the fortress and also watched the sunset. It was so cool. And here we are sitting at the bus stop, waiting for the bus that will take us to the hotel. Our last days in Slovenia were pretty calm. We didn't go anywhere far from the hotel. In the morning we usually had breakfast. Here Alisa is skillfully managing two spoons at the same time. In the afternoon we went for a walk. We visited playgrounds near our hotel. While Alisa was playing there, we sat and watched her communication with other children and discussed how we liked it in Slovenia. We went on swings, played musical instruments and watched a beautiful sunset. Our hotel had a playroom and Alisa liked to spend time there. She liked soft toys, especially this panda. Alisa also liked to watch the fountains. We packed our stuff, checked out and went to the city center. We said goodbye to the famous Slovenian dragon statues on the famous Ljubljana bridge. We liked Slovenia and now we were convinced that our choice of country to move to was right. We then went to Zagreb airport. Our plan was to fly for a short vacation in Spain to enjoy the sea. I will tell you about this in the next episode. <laughs>